The news with Gina Grad. So New Zealand's prime minister announced on Wednesday that the country will ban assault weapons, including the type used in the mass shootings that killed 50 last Friday at two mosques in Christchurch. The ban will take effect uh, once it is approved by legislatures. Ardern, uh, her name is... um, New uh, Zealand's an island, right? Yes, it is. Shouldn't be allowed to have assault weapons on islands. It's fair. And you know what? They're okay with that. Yeah, I I don't know why. It doesn't matter how big it is. It feels weird to have someone with an assault weapon on an island. Yeah, Mm. and they actually, I I heard a report, they were talking about it and saying there's just a different relationship with guns. They have them. It's mostly recreational and hunting. And they're like, you know, it's not about defending yourself or your property. It's about hunting and recreation. And they said, if you want them back, most people are saying take them back. Uh, So here's what Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Most people are saying take them back? Yeah, there was, um, who was? It must have been on KFI. Uh, they were maybe KBC. They were talking to a pundit in. They're not Australia. buying them back. Well, I have a whole thing on how they're getting the bu- the guns back. But then people aren't saying, you know, my cold dead hands. You're going to pry this out of my. Yeah, yeah. Are they AR-15s? I have a whole list of everything that's going to go on that ban list. Yeah, I don't like uh, assault wipe. You know, if you want to live in. I mean, Mexico, go ahead. It's going to include uh, islands. I don't like. Yeah. You know, caliber sizes of the actual bullets. Um, I'll I'll, I'll show you after. uh, Still, it's it's all like it's this looks nothing hurts. It's still all sort of symbolic. Like Mm -hmm. if anyone wants to get a pistol and put clips in it Mm -hmm. and. You take kill, two of them and go wherever you want. You just kill a bunch of people or you could blow them up with fertilizer. But but at least somebody's doing something and everybody's cool with it. You know, it's not just, well, yeah, yeah. we'll just see what um, happens again. No, I'm I'm fine with it. I just – and it's good and it is sort of – it's symbolic and it's fine that it's symbolic. Like, all right, symbolic. Here we go. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Today I'm announcing that New Zealand will ban all military-style semi-automatic weapons. We will also ban all assault rifles. Hold on a second. I, there's a giant man standing next to her. His hands are flailing about. I, I'm not getting the message. I got a couple things. Look, if you're deaf, He's an interpreter. you got to learn to read lips. <coughs> and if you can read lips and read my lips, read her lips. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? She's she's saying she's the one that he's doing the mouthing yeah. and the handing. Well, but I'm saying to you. Read lips. If you're deaf, learn to read lips. Let's get this huge man off the stage and let's get him uh, back to the Steelers training facility <laughs> where he came from. She's diminutive. You hear that, lazy deaf people? He's giant. Yeah. He's too big. She, he's literally casting a shadow on her, on her speech here. Literally. She's tiny. Yeah. She's tiny. He's huge. She seems to have no difficulty enunciating. Look yeah. at their mouth. Yeah. They're in the same shape. Right. Get him out of there. And look, here's the deal. You got two choices. If you're deaf, you either learn to read lips or you don't get timely messages. Mm. <laughs> That's my message to you. We'll have this printed for you about it half an It's going to be in USA Today in four hours. Read it. I there you go. I you're so hostile towards the heart of hearing. I don't need this. Okay. Controversial take. Well, hopefully you can still hear this even though he's standing next door. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's too pay. big. He's too big for this job. She's too small. We got to even this out somehow. It's not fitting right. DFG just unfollowed us on Twitter. Oh, no. Sorry. Go ahead. She's tiny and he's huge. Sorry. It's a real Moana situation. We will ban all (laughs) high capacity magazines. We will ban all parts with the ability to convert semi automatic or any other type of firearm into a military style semi automatic weapon. We will ban parts that cause a firearm to generate semi-automatic, automatic, or close to automatic gunfire. In short, every semi-automatic I weapon got that in the terrorist attack on Friday this is a disaster. will be banned. I don't know what she's saying. She's, she's oh, but- saying Wednesday is uh, National Dog Walking Day. I have no idea what's coming out of her mouth. I'm staring yeah, at a let's huge go, let's go man. Fishing. Yeah, there's a huge man. His hands are all over the road. He doesn't need to do the mouth thing. God. She's right next to him, moving her mouth. Mm-hmm. And by the way, who are you going to believe? 
His mouth or her mouth? Well, she has a microphone she, in front of she's her. She's coming out of her mouth. Yeah. I'm looking at her Lost mouth. Did you, a lot more screen uh, real estate as well. Yeah. 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 Did you get uh, the gunfire part? That part I got. Yeah. Uh, if you're a deaf lip reader, do you read lips with an accent? Like, can you tell she has an accent? Mm. Her mouth position's probably a little different. Mm. It's interesting. It's yeah. Me, it's semi-interesting. All right. Look, here's the other thing, too. Let's, 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 let's do what we do. We do best. We put them in that little box. We get them on the box, right. and we get them in the oh, lower sure. lower right hand corner yeah. in a box. And once in a while, the crawl screws him up. And, and if he can't fit in the box, he doesn't get to do it. Well, this guy's not fitting in a box. We need a refrigerator box for this cat. He's a big dude. Yeah, look, here's the deal. He's bursting out of the box like Porky Pig. Well, you know, F1 drivers they don't go above 150 pounds. Jockeys they don't go above 110 pounds. Let's do that for the for the translator. Sure. Let's do that for the, the sign language, sign language, language guys. Okay. That guy's too much man. You know what? You make me realize I apologize for something. I buried the lead of this story. Mm-hmm. Yes. The interpreters are too big. This guy is. This one is. Yeah. What do you think his story is? Like He's, he was a, wrestled in college, blew out his knee, took was, was in love with some chick who was a, 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 interp- a sign language interpreter and took the class oh, just to get just close to, to her. Like, there's something here, right? Yeah. yeah, there's some reason he's a giant man. Who he's signs. too big to do this. Not playing rugby. This is not the, this is not the, the role of a big man. The big, big guys aren't attracted to this sport. This is New Zealand. There's a lot of Maori. There's a lot mm-hmm. of, you know, guys, big guys, big, you know, I'm going to look Islanders. into it, but let's, let's get him out of there. Okay, well, that's what's important. All right, yes. All right. Uh, so, Kraft, he, you got offered a sweet deal of a hundred hours of community service and STD screenings and I, admitting he's guilty. I'm sure this about the law. Uh, the the part where like, oh, we're going to make an example of him, or we got a guy, he's a DA, but he's up for re-election. You know, like, can we stop that? Yeah. Like, can we yeah. just treat regular guys like whatever it is you do, mm-hmm. that's what you did, no matter how much you're worth. Take that blindfold off justice, put it on yourself. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, hey, it's Robert Kraft, we're going to make an example mm-hmm. of him. Oh, why? Because he pays a shitload in taxes. Mm-hmm. Because he pays taxes enough for 500 families, we got to make an example of my my feeling is like maybe we give him a little, little lighter look. Well, he feels the same way. Yeah, fuck this. Who's this DA? Well, he's he, Kraft is rejecting this deal. Good, yes. fuck us. Yeah, good. Uh, I, the, screw you. <laughs> like I, I, the guy probably He'll pays his proxy. $15 million a year in taxes. How about we give him a break? Well, what Tuesday. I'm going to make an example of him. Why? Because yeah. his wife died and he wins the Super Bowl mm. and he's rich? Like, why do we have to make an example of it? Do Wait. you want to throw Lori and Felicity in on that with mm-hmm. the examples from the USC? Yeah, I, I, don't need, I don't need him. You know, I said to Mark Garagas, what, what's with the million dollar bail? Mm. Like, what, what, is she a flight risk? Mm-hmm. She was in Canada when you told her to come back. Like, right. well, she was already in another country. Mm-hmm. And she's like, why do you have to. Send the uh, SEAL Team 6 mm-hmm. over to her house in Bel Air. Like, what, what? what is all this shit? And he's like, well, they just send her a summons to appear and she'd appear. Like, mm. they don't need to do any of this stuff. Bust like, through a window at 5 a.m. You don't have to pull the van up. You just send her a summons that says you got to mm. appear and then she'll get her lawyer and then she'll appear. You don't need yeah. to show up Zip at her tire. house at 5 in the morning. Mm. And as far as the million dollar bond, you don't, that's unnecessary mm. and insane. Mm. Like, well, we're making an example. Oh, okay. Of of who? Mon Pa Kettle over here? Like, who? who's robbing all the banks? Who's... What are they doing? Like, yeah. I, I get the part where you... We have heard their name before, and now we shall make an example right. of them. What did they do that we need to make an example of them? They got their stupid kid on the crew team or paid for whatever, something that has been going on for as long as we've had institutions, and... Craft over there gets a handy. That's something that's mm. been going on for a while as well. What is this part where we need to make examples of mm. the people that are working and paying taxes? And we've never wanted it more. And screw you. You're not allowed to make examples. You just apply the law equally to everybody. Well, he agrees with you. Well- yeah. That part I agree with. So uh, the, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the, don't make an example out of them just because they are rich or famous. That's absurd. But also treat them, get, apply the law to them the same way you'd apply to anyone else. Like if they're guilty of tax fraud because they claimed a write off, it was actually a $100,000 payment to so and so, that's, that's illegal. You can't do that. And just yeah. you're rich, you shouldn't get hammered more, but you shouldn't get hammered less. Works both ways. That's true. So Tuesday, prosecutors in Florida made an offer, well, the offer I just told you about, and uh, yes, to complete it's the 100 education. hours of communication. Community service. Hundred hours community. What's service. with the STD test? You he don't think he's one. got a doctor? 
and an education course about prostitution. And he has to admit that he could have been found guilty. And once all that happens, all the charges would be dropped. He's not going for it. He turned down the deal saying wow. his, he's innocent. Uh, his attorneys are saying he's innocent. Graf is charged with soliciting prostitution after he was allegedly caught paying for sexual favors. It's part of a sting operation. Oh. And uh, the charges he would be facing, or I guess will be facing, are a pair of second degree misdemeanors. If he was convicted, the charges usually carry a sentence of 60 days in county and uh i think he's gonna I think he's gonna fight this one good and whoever the douchebag i don't know who the da is or whatever but just go, go bust criminals would you jack off there's probably a few running around miami oh, jesus huh. christ i'm jupiter I'm, <laughs> yeah, make an example and fuck you this guy got a hand job leave him alone also i um I'm not neither here nor there on the pay, paying a shitload in taxes. I don't. I don't think you need to make an example of this guy. He's paid his dues. Leave him alone. I think you should be able to buy your way out of this shit. That's me. Mm, mm-hmm. Controversial. Controversial. <laughs> well, <laughs> look. Uh, under my, if you do, if you do my math, we could have, we could, ha- we'd I have, mean, we'd have that bullet train to LAX, <laughs> and these guys have a lot less semen in them. We essentially do have a system where you can buy your way out of these crimes. I mean, that's essentially the system that we have. Yeah. There's can, a reason Michael Jackson never did a day in the bar. You can buy. The reason O.J. Simpson never saw a day, uh, you know, aside from when he was, you know, locked up as a suspect, or, but, uh, you know, never did in prison time. Yeah. I guess so. I'm trying to think it's about kind of, it. It's kind of the system we Well, have. it's O.J.'s thing was kind of, O.J.'s a little bit different because <laughs> O.J., O.J. got off, he had the dream team and he had his representation, but he also just had a lot of people in the jurors box who are like, I don't care if he did it. It's payback for all the times right. a black guy was wronged, which I don't know. I can give some credit to Cochran for juror selection, selection right. on, on that. As but Gary that, says, that's where it's won and lost. That is an interesting, that's how you're going to win a case when people in the jury are like, I'm going to let this guy go for all the stuff mm-hmm. that's happened in the past. Like, how do you talk him out of that? No, it's pretty you determined. Don't. All right, Gina, what else? Well, Amy Schumer is hopeful that at some point being diagnosed with autism won't be a big deal. The comedian appeared on Wednesday night's episode of Late Night with Seth Meyers. Did and she have her kid? No, she's very pregnant. She's very pregnant. Very pregnant. You'll see the clip, yeah. I saw her, I was watching some of her uh, Netflix special, and she was pretty pregnant mm-hmm. during that yeah but then i was doing the wait a minute when did they film you never know Recently, if they filmed it six months ago yeah. or but it had to be recent and then they must have turned this thing around pretty fast because mm. she seemed pretty preggers yeah. during the yeah oh, she's very very pregnant now mm-hmm. um so she's talking to seth about how her husband chris fisher uh was just diagnosed as high functioning autism on the special well, that's what as an adult yeah that's wow. what you want well, she's thrilled about it for several reasons. Um, she, uh, This isn't part of the clip, but she says he's incapable of lying, which is great for her, but also gets her into some uh, tough spots when she's trying to leave a party. Listen, early. high-functioning hemorrhoids is good. Mm-hmm. Like, you put high-functioning in front of anything, it, it works. High-functioning asshole. That's right. I, I tell uh, Lynette all the time, and she's like, uh, she goes, you have Asperger's, you know? And I go, okay, good. Everyone open their mouth so I can spit in it. And they go, what? And I go, you guys should all get some of this. That's the way we should do this. Everyone should get a little bit of this. Yeah, if it's working. We get, we get some shit done around sure. here. So let's go. Everyone just open your mouth. Dad, will spit in it. Sw- I could swab you, but uh, what's the fun in that? Come on. And the then you guys get a little dust in your Asperger's, and then we get this uh, party started. How about that? All right. Yeah. Well, this is what Amy has to say about her She husband. loves it when I say that. <laughs> yeah, he was diagnosed as high-functioning uh, autism spectrum disorder. But that has been something that has been uh, like a sum positive for your marriage. Yeah, totally. That's why we wanted, we both wanted to talk about it because it's been totally positive. I think a lot of people resist getting diagnosed and even with some of their children because of the stigma that comes along with it. But you're not just diagnosed and then they throw you out. Like, you know, hopefully if you can get help, like the tools that we've been given have made his life so much better and our marriage and our life more manageable. And so I just wanted to, you know, encourage people to not be afraid of that stigma because 
Like, you know, when ADD was the new thing, like everybody, you're, like, you're a little embarrassed if you got diagnosed with attention deficit. And now everyone's like, I have that. Yeah. And, you know, I think there are a lot of people uh, with autism who go undiagnosed when I think their life could be better if they got those tools. And I, uh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, comedians just become heroes and stop telling jokes. She has, you know, my Ben Stiller body dysmorphic whatever uh-huh. thought where it's like you go, yeah, every movie he's playing some kind of obnoxious fitness coach right. and is in his underwear or shirts off. Or he's or, not. He still finds a way. He still <laughs> figures out a way to get down no to those sleeves. speedos, <laughs> like whatever it is, like, oh, he's going to play in the volleyball <laughs> game, the pool ball. Yep. All they have is these miniature speedos, That's right? right. And it's like. Most comedians are like, eh, give me some board shorts and a tank top yeah. or whatever. It's like, he's always in there. Mm-hmm. Amy Schumer manages to get naked or nearly naked in almost everything. I was, I'm watching her stand-up special, and she's like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, okay, I, we can see that. Don't believe me? She like, <laughs> uh, pulls her dress up, and woo! it's like, woo! And I, I, I get it if you did a thing where it's like, let's just say, Brian, mm-hmm. Let's just say every time you pull the nut out, okay. every time you just undid one button in your Levi's and pull the nut out, everyone would stand up and start clapping oh, and wow. just be like, hey, he's a hero. Our, he is a hero. Our live shows would be very different. <laughs> Look at that hairy, saggy bag. And this guy's got the guts to pull it out. Hero. Like, eventually, you'd just be going out to dinner, just going, I just pull the nut out. And went, I wore my dolphin shorts because I figured a lot of folks here would want to see a little side nut. Is that... <laughs> Cruise to Corolla Cay in early October. Well, see this, not. This is one of her latest pictures on Instagram, by the way. Oh, she's to prove Jesus. your point. Totally naked. naked hey, that's through through my nut. Probably Central Park. That's my testicle. Yeah. She she pulled her dress up like over her head, and she was talking about her navel being distended or something like that. And it and everyone starts clapping. But I, I realized she has been sort of programmed. Like in a Pavlovian way, that every time you pull something up or show something, everyone starts clapping Woo! because you go, "Hey, look at person doesn't look that good in their underpants with yeah, the guts." Go for it, girl. You know, and they, she's she's obviously feeding off it, or there's yeah. something about it that works to her like reward system, it's a body positivity revolution. It's a little bit different than the Ben Stiller thing. <laughs> We're looking at a picture on stage with her. You know when you do a stand up set at some point you gotta you gotta drop a nut yeah, or yeah. pull your skirt out. Oh, I've been to the ice house. It's hard to get through a set like back when Carol Burnett would do her show. Oh yeah. overhead. That's why I have to watch Here's at the end. Yeah. She'd do that move to her grandma to and then boom <laughs> sundress right over the head like it's not a necessary function in a <laughs> the end of Gallagher shows used to be very oh, different. Oh, very different. That front row. So she is a comedian who I get to see naked or partially naked in on almost every movie. And I kind of get the Chris Hemsworth sort of part of the business where it's like, look at that guy, he's Thor, you know, look at him with his shirt off, and all muscles candy. bulging and everything, whatever. I, we get the rock and, and all that. But, uh, this is a little into the Ben Stiller world. Well, what about Chelsea Handler? I she's think she, got it. She likes to get it, get it naked. She's got that too. And so I think, Ben Stiller has the oh you think I'm a funny little Jewish kid how about this six pack you I'm know so what I mean I think he kind of shows you that Chelsea Handler's got the uh, if you want to bang me I think you're going to want to laugh a little bit too and I think the Amy Schumer thing is oh you're a hero you're a hero right. look at you right. looking right. mediocre in your underpants you're a hero so she they're all used to it for they're all getting it from little different levels but I think they're getting that yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well observed. Because I've seen almost all the Netflix specials, and I've not seen anyone. Well, uh, Burt Kreischer actually does the. Uh, that's right. Stole her Kreischer. Kreischer. Sorry. That's yeah. Right. He does the sh- he does the show with the shirt off, right? That's Burt. ripping off his act. Yeah. Or oh, yeah, that's true. Did you like the special? I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I like the part of it. I, I watch. If you like popped out belly buttons, yeah, it's a whole. I don't. She's. I think she's funny. Her stand-up's her, changed like, a lot. Crazy funny. Just... She used to play like that a, a character that was sort of controversial. Now she's kind of doing her thing as yeah. herself. It's a little different. Yeah, it's 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 fine. I haven't watched the whole thing. I'm gonna no I'm gonna watch the rest. 
All right. Last one. What well, do we got? Your precious, <clears throat> precious Peloton in the news. I don't know mm. if you've heard about oh. this. Mired in controversy. Yes. See, I watch TMZ. They're not clearing the music. Oh, they have <clears throat> had it too good for too long. Mm. CBS News reports that fitness company Peloton is being sued for allegedly using more than a thousand unlicensed songs in its popular workout videos. Nine music publishers filed a lawsuit seeking more than $150 million in damages. So they allege that Peloton knowingly and willfully used songs in these videos without obtaining licenses. Uh, these licenses uh, give a mu- music user permission to release <clears throat> it in a video format because these are all workout videos. Right. So it's Lady Gaga, Justin Timberlake, Bruno Mars, Ed Sheeran, a million others. Uh, and this is not... They're not uh, the artists aren't the one uh, with the lawsuit, by the way. This is the publishers. They yeah. collect the income from the licenses <clears> and pay <throat> out the uh, songwriters. So TMZ caught up to Mark McGrath at the airport recently and asked him what he thought of the lawsuit. He became very impassioned at what I believe is LAX. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Wait a minute. This is on TMZ. Yeah. Did you? How come it? I have no prior knowledge of this? <laughs> Nobody alerted you. Matt, how come I was not made aware of uh, Sugar Ray at the airport <laughs> in TMZ? He has feelings about artists Let's and getting their their desserts. Well, you're talking to a songwriter. They are fortunate enough to have some songs that were hits, you know. Yeah. So why is my property free now? Yeah. It's called intellectual property. And what people have a hard time understanding is that it's not something tangible. You can't touch it. So they think it's, well, it's not really a crime. But if I walked into a Basquiat in a museum and took it off the wall and put it in my house, yeah. is it mine now? Right. Now, I know that sounds like an extreme example, but a song like Fly Every Morning that we wrote, those songs are worth millions of dollars. And they're spinning to that, guaranteed. They're still spinning and they yeah. They'll be spinning in perpetuity, and they're worth millions of dollars. Yeah. I can't just go take a Basquiat off MoMA uh, in New York and put it in my house and go, it's mine now. Right. So it's, I know it's an extreme example, but I hope people, I can let people know what intellectual property is. It has value. Yeah. So creating these billion-dollar companies off the backs of hard work to songwriters and musicians, yeah. I don't think it's fair. And by the way, I'm cool. I play around the world. I've been fortunate enough. I get more than I deserve. I'm just worried about songwriters that deserve, deserve more, yeah. deserve to get paid. That's what we do. Right. You know, that's, that's a legacy I leave to my kids. I'll tell you, this man's a genius. Mm. He's a hero, and no one knows finance like Mark McGrath because he came to me at Kimmel's house once during a party. He sidled up next to me, had a drink in his hand. He looked to his left, he looked to his right, saw no one was listening, and he whispered to me. Now having kids and a wife, I was in about the same position he was in. He said, uh, since... When did paying for everything count for nothing? <laughs> and I went, I don't know when that happened, but it's it's on. Wow. It's on. You pay for everything and you get to even. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I didn't think it used to work that way. And Do you like, like mine? I know. I think this is, I think this is progress. Wow. I think we've evolved to this. He's like, yeah, but I'm glad. So it was a fun party? <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> Clint Glass is very quiet. <laughs> yeah. It's a surprise for uh, most adult males when mm-hmm. they come. God, God willing, you guys all get to the position of me and Mark <laughs> McGrath where you get to realize that paying for everything counts for nothing. No. Oh, That's right. That sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For you guys? That yeah, sucks for us. So you got for paying for everything. <laughs> That's what we get. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I will, I will share on your point. with uh, Last time Mark McGrath was on the podcast, I was an intern here. And he got here 15 minutes early, and he went up to every single intern here and every single person here. Go, went. I'm going on a Starbucks run. What do you want? And then goes and gets Starbucks for everybody here, and he paid for everything and has never left me. I consider him the nicest guy that's ever come to. <laughs> oh, so you paid him in gratitude and in in, me- in happy yeah. memories. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, well, that, that, then maybe that, that, fair, I'm getting, right? now that could be what I'm getting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Intern Chris. <laughs> Intern Chris. <laughs> All right, do we bring it home? We'll bring it home right now. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. What do you think of coming on the tits? Gina, Gina Grad! That was the news with Gina Grad. Hey, man. Hey, buddy. Hey, man. Why should people listen to us every single day, Drew? Because uh, they complain that we're not around anymore, and where are you once you guys come back? And lo and behold, we've been back the whole time. They need to listen to us every day. And I think the world needs a nice dose of us. Y- yes, it's that time. Every day. Yep, every Podcast day. Podcast one and it's, Apple. It's uh, healthy. It's healthy. It'll improve your soul. Thank yeah. you. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew Pinsky. Getting it on five days a week. The Adam and Drew Show. Weekdays on Carolla Digital and Podcast One.
Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is uh, joining us via Skype. There's an event coming up, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Cosmic Collisions, it's at the uh, Long Beach Terrace Theater. That is uh, Monday, tonight as you hear this, Monday, March 25th. And dates coming up all over San Jose and Sacramento as well. I'll tell you more about that in a second. Uh, Neil, thanks for joining us. And thanks for having me on. I, I, I feel like a old friend. I've been on a couple of times, and it's always good to just be in your just to just to hang with you. To, to use his terms, it's to be in your orbit, Adam. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, elliptical orbit. As long as, long as it's a non-collisional orbit, we're fine. <laughs> you have a book that I'm intrigued by here called "Accessory to War: The Unspoken Alliance Between Astrophysics and the Military." Can you shed a little light on that? Yeah, it's a pretty fat book. I, in fact, I have a co-author, um, Avis Lang, because I, I, I calculated it would take me about a thousand years to have finished writing that book. Wow. So I have a longtime uh, collaborator and researcher, Avis Lang. And it's an exploration of the centuries and millennia that astronomers and astrophysicists, just we folk who only care about the universe, actually made fundamental contributions to military hegemony. And normally you think of us as pretty passive, which we are. You know, we wait for the photons of light to reach us, gather them in a detector and take them home and contemplate the universe. But it turns out we have a lot of resonant interests with military interest. We care about precision uh, 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 timing. We care about multispectral imaging. We care about the movement of fast moving objects in the sky and the mathematics, the physics, the engineering that we do and that the military does. When you part the curtains, there's a resonance between the two that has not really previously been explored and it's done at, to great lengths in this book. Yeah, well, look no further than the fat boy, fat little boy and fat man. I'm yeah. trying to think of the atomic bombs, but uh, yeah, yeah, the two atomic bombs, the, the yeah, Manhattan yeah, yeah, experiment. Right. I mean, it's crazy. Also, it's crazy. I just saw some World War II in color kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. it is insane. In the mid 1940s, everything was mechanical and they're doing all these calculations with slide rulers yeah. and steno pads oh, and stuff. Yeah. And everything is huge. Yeah. Everything right, is right. massive. But the idea that Everything, well, not everything, but that it worked is yeah. an insane Yeah, if you put enough smart people in a room, uh, scientists with clever and talented engineers, they can make almost anything happen. And I'll give you one other fast example relevant to the nuclear era. Um, astrophysicists were hired by Los Alamos. Uh, th by the way, Los Alamos is the keeper of the nation's nuclear arsenal, and they've been that ever since they were conceived. Well, why would they hire us? Well, we care about how stars make energy. This is thermonuclear fusion in the center of a star tamped down by the gravitational weight of the star itself. Well, on the other side of the wall where the astrophysicists are doing their calculation – sharing the same computer are people calculating the yields on nuclear fusion weapons that, of course, replaced the simple, tiny atomic bombs that leveled Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The, the hydrogen bomb, it is the way stars make energy. And it's the way it, – and it, it is the foundation of the Cold War arsenal that kept this – the world hostage for 50 years. You mentioned that uh, smart people can make anything happen. We were Adam and I were having a conversation about global warming to that very end, trying to figure out what we could do, what are we likely to do to solve that problem, and how's that going to work? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, you know, let me give it a, a fun sort of admittedly naive but hopeful thought that we figure out how to just scrub the CO2 from the atmosphere, use right. solar panels, get the energy, and then we could actually tune the future climate of the planet right. to our liking. Right. By the way, we already know how to redirect rivers. We create dams. We uh, Los Angeles has this huge LA river basin to prevent floods. You know, uh, uh, engineers have been messing with Earth's natural way ever since we've had engineers. So the next level would be geoengineering on a, uh, on a scale where uh, maybe, you know, okay, too much CO2, take some out. Yep. All right, make that adjustment, make yep. the measurement. Okay, we're good for another 10 years. I, I, I don't, you know, I, that's how I see it. Solutions hardly ever come from people changing their behavior. They come from a clever person 
coming up with a solution to the problem, and then we move on to the next. This is what we were uh, saying, right? Well, we're yeah. talking about nuclear, and I've spoken to a few scientists and a few people who seem to know um, this world, and they say that nuclear is good, but it's got a lot of negative stigma attached to it, and thus it's not going to fly it, from a, more of a popularity standpoint than a effectiveness standpoint. That's completely accurate. That is completely accurate. It's safer than people's sentiment would have you think it is. By, by, right? by set or several orders of magnitude, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. In fact, yes. And so it's the you know it's one of the two um, two banned N words in our society. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what would I, here's here's what here's my thing, and and I yeah. realize it's political. But my argument is it doesn't have to be political. I was literally saying to my wife the other day, she's like, you know, when you get all bossy and it sounds like you're judging and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, sometimes I'm just saying rinse the coffee mug and it just means rinse the coffee mug. It's not a put down. You know, yeah. you're taking it as you're politicizing. How you say it, Adam? Rinse the coffee mug. Yeah. I'm literally one a coffee mug that doesn't have a ring around it in two days. So I'm saying it. Why must it be politicized? And I would say the same thing about nuclear. Like, what if some some sort of uh, right thinking person said, look, uh, I, I want to get rid of the coal fire generators and I don't want to dam up any more rivers because uh, the, the trout are trying to hatch. But uh, nuclear, I know someone said no nukes in 1974 and we all got a bad taste in our mouth, but the technology's come a long way. We're all we're all going the same direction. We want clean fuel. Uh, sure, it's, wind, solar, that's on the horizon, but we're not there yet. How about it? Yeah, so interesting. Uh, University of Oxford has a new professorship, new in the last decade or so, a professorship of the public understanding of risk. Right. That's uh, the name of a professorship. And when you look at how much, how tolerant we have been of the health and life disasters that mining coal has brought upon civilization in the last 150 years, you know, tens of thousands of deaths, hundreds of thousands of deaths in the process of uh, 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 digging for coal, mining coal, the lung deaths, that pe the breathing deaths that have come about from it. We somehow accept that. And you get intermittent um, uh, nuclear uh, accidents with a death toll far less than that, and then people react and want to ban all nuclear. The point is, if we understood risk more rationally, Ugh. we'd be making very different decisions in our lives. Well, well this, I, this I is agree. a general problem. Humans I, have a horrible assessment. They don't, we don't. No one has an ability to assess probability. I I agree. Like I talk to people all the time. Like, what about nuclear? They're like, what about Fukushima? And I was like, a, a tsunami hit and nobody died, or yeah. two people died. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Everything is just all the all the pipelines, all the underground drilling, all the shale. All the, you think it's all. Just just nobody ever injured. No one, no one in an offshore oil derrick has ever been injured. Like but whole movies have been about that, right? Oh my God, the right. Armageddon, the best movie ever made, <laughs> had all the whole first. <laughs> I know you didn't just say best movie ever made. Right. I know you top, didn't just say that. Top five. But either way, <laughs> they, Bruce Willis was he was a leatherneck out there. It was great. Yeah. All right. So I'm. I'm so – see, Neil, I'm glad to hear you say this because I think Drew and I felt the same way, which is, look, we would like to solve this CO2 problem ourselves. Yeah. Thus, yeah. Let's go do nuclear's it. On, the, on the table. Let's not freak out. Let's go solve the problem. By the way, a quick one I think you'd appreciate. Do you ever hear about the, the risk of the manure catastrophe? Do you ever read about that? No. So it, it, in, in Manhattan, in New York City, 100 and some, you know, 10 years ago, 110 years ago or so, uh, the city was getting busier and busier. And there were all these sort of horse-drawn delivery carts and horse-drawn taxis, cabs, they were called. And, and so horses would poop, right? And the poop would be all over the street, street. And so someone would come clean it up. There's only so much of that you could sell as fertilizer when you live in the middle of a major metropolitan area. So they started hauling it over to a side street and then slowly would take it out of town. By the way, this would breed flies and it was nasty. And so they did the calculation. They said, if this keeps up, we will reach a manure catastrophe <laughs> where the horses that bring in the carts to remove the manure, manure 
leave as much manure behind them as they take out. Yeah. And right. so you reach a catastrophic tipping point. And so how do you do? Do you give horses food that makes them poop less? Do you not feed them hay? And this, what solved the problem was the car. Right. Period. The and, car. And we switched from horses, which we've been using for thousands of years, to cars in about 10 years. I think we better just sit around and wring our hands and maybe get uh, the vice president in there to talk about how this is the end, this is it, everyone just prepare. <laughs> well, what, what I'm, what the part that is um, the discouraging to this podcaster is <laughs> I get that there's folks like my mom who say no nukes, but the politicians – are elected to make the kind of decisions, not win a popularity contest, but to do what is best for the constituency. And it drives me insane that they want no part of this. Um, Neil. But wait, 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 wait. In all fairness, it's always been a popularity contest. I'm sure. Right, right. We want to not believe that. Yeah. But it's odd that, you know, when you hire a CEO or anybody important in a company, there's a resume that gets debated, it gets talked about. Whereas to, 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 Put someone in power to run an entire country and to be the head of the free world. It's a popularity contest. Yep. It's been that way from the beginning. Yep. So we know that. Yeah. So if you had a magic wand, Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, just in summation here, and uh, Green New Deal and uh, global warming and all that, what would what would you put into place? You have a magic wand. You have an unlimited expense account. You can do anything you want. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's a great question. Well, uh, I would, I I have a cop out answer to that. What I would do is I would try to make sure that elected officials, if they are not otherwise scientifically literate, because it is a popularity contest, that they are somehow trained to know how to listen to experts. Oh boy. (laughs) And rather than friends or wish something to be true, that is objectively false. Then the leaders, the forces of leadership would have some hope of bringing the nation, our society, civilization forward with an expectation that we will survive ourselves. And and I think you, you need to put in that kind of recipe into how things are so that you don't have to worry about it a generation from now or a generation after that, because the seeds of our survival will then be um, uh, planted from the beginning and just unlimited money. Okay, fine. Here's what I do. I'll up the science budget because it is from science where we get the solutions, not only to problems that science causes, of course, but also to problems that we don't foresee coming based on our behavior, our desires, based on what direction things happen to go. Yep. And, and so no one's going to give up their smartphone. No one's going to give up their, their uh, transportation options. They're things you don't want to give up and they're all brought to you by science and technology. Let's face that. And so let's have more of that in society. So the next time the hurricane comes, you don't say, buy toilet paper, buy what, run. Instead of that, you have engineers in your mists and you say, how can I tap the cyclonic energy of that hurricane, use it to drive the energy needs of the city so that the city thrives instead of getting leveled by the hurricane. That's an example of the kind of thinking you want to be pervasive in society. Without it, we might as well just all move back to the caves because that's where we're headed. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I'll be praying for your soul tonight, yes, my me friend. Too, me too. <laughs> it's going to be at the Long Beach Terrace Theater that is uh, coming up that Monday, March twenty uh, fifth, and there's dates We're all about collisions, everything that collides, colliding galaxies, asteroid collisions, and I will give a shout out to Armageddon. I must. Um, Great, and, and, and I'll say it's one of your it's one of your favorite movies. I'll <laughs> tell the audience. And we had a uh, we had a near collision up in the uh, near Alaska a week or so ago, right? Yeah, so I mean, the the point is, this has been going on all the time. We just know about it now. <laughs> right, right. There are better ways of detecting. Excellent. Which is pretty scary. Uh, the Hayden Planetarium dot org slash Tyson is uh, where tickets are available. Always great to talk to you, my friend. I hope to see you in person real soon. Yeah, one day, definitely. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Neil deGrasse Tyson.